Good afternoon, everybody. It's Stephen Paul from WinExtra with your daily brief for October 20th, which makes this the 31st. 30, blah, blah. 31st. I'm tired there, Steve. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a pepperoni from lunch. It just did me right in. Uh, <laughs> You're getting to that age, are you? Yeah, I know. I know. Well, you know what can I say? Well, it happens. You get old, you know, and then you try to refresh yourself with plastic surgery and liposuction and make try to make yourself more, more thin and beautiful. And you know that's apparently what Apple tried to do on stage today and failed miserably. Oh God, that you know I watched part of it through a different feed because I didn't have an Apple to watch on. Because you see, they did it again. They, had, they did it again, trying to drum up demand and drum up interest by only letting you watch it on an iOS device. Yeah. Well, thankfully, Callie Lewis from yes. Geek Reeks TV put up a... She rebroadcast the feed, so we all watched it through hers. And um, I felt bad for Steve Jobs. I really felt bad for the guy up on stage. Because every time he made an announcement, the crowd barely reacted. There was hardly a clap. The, the biggest clap when was was when he announced that um, there was no clap when they announced Lion, and the biggest clap was when he announced that the new MacBook Airs uh, are available as of and from today. But it wasn't a great clap. It was sort of like a oh shit, maybe I should be clapping now. Clap. Yeah. You know. I, I um, I'm myself. I lasted. I think it was until just before I guess they were getting into the Mac errors because I just couldn't handle listening to it anymore. It was just... For, it was, it was. It, it was a bit depressing. And for people who didn't get to see the stage and haven't heard the news yet, basically it boils, boils down to this. Lion, at the moment, is little more than an update to iLife. Yep. Apps from within, um, within the OS. So basically your app store in the OS, not through iTunes, and that's it. FaceTime. Oh, FaceTime, yes, and it's now it's now a FaceTime camera, it's not a webcam, yes. and the big push, something I couldn't get over that Jobs kept talking about, full screen apps, as if having something full screen is new in this day and age. Um, didn't, isn't the whole <coughs> idea of multitasking being able to get away from the old DOS or Windows 3.0? Yes, it, it's about getting away from one application at a time. That's what multitasking is. But, you know, when you're putting out seriously underpowered devices like the new MacBook Airs and charging way over the top for them, this is the kind of thing you need to be doing. Now, let me get, let me get this off the bat. These things look sexy. They're tiny. They come in two flavors, 13.3 inches and 11.6 inches. Um, forgive me here. I'm reading off my notes yeah. that I took during the thing. Um, two flavors. Now, they no optical drives. They do have USB ports, which is a pleasant change to see. But they're entirely based on flash drives. And the specs aren't brilliant. The 11.6 inch model, entry level, $999 for... 64 gigs of storage with 2 gigs of RAM. I'm sure there's bigger iPhones on the market. Um, and that makes the big, no sense. Exactly. The Big Brother version then is 13.3 inches, again 2 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigs. That'll set you back 1299 okay. If you want to splash out for 250 gigs of, 256 gigs, gigs of storage, it's going to cost you a sweet $1,600. Right now, you could probably go up to Staples or I go down to my buddy's store, and I could pick up a 13-inch, brand spanking new Acer, fully loaded, for maybe four or five hundred bucks. Yeah, but it doesn't come from Apple. It hasn't got the sign of Jobs on it, so you know, forget about it. But it's got like you know a 500 gig hard drive. It's got oh yeah, I know that two to four gig of RAM. Look, in this day and age, if you're spending any more than $600 on a laptop, you have to be expecting 4 gigs of memory. Yeah. Seriously. Or at least right. bumping up to a 17-inch. Exactly. And these things, are, these things are tiny. And the battery life, they haven't used the standard battery life testing, I suspect, for reasons as we can all guess. Yes. But um, the big one clocks in at 7 hours battery life, according to Apple's testing. And the little one comes in at five hours of testing. Doing what? Do you know what? 
if doing what it, it was the oh, I forget what test they used it, it was in the screenshot but it wasn't the standard test anyway and I think the diagram that they had up was the wireless internet or something I, I don't know I have to find a screenshot of that maybe we'll try and put it up in the, in the show when it's done now if I had the money to spend though I'd be spending it on Windows Phone 7 and Microsoft wants to make sure that I spend it on Windows Phone 7 and as we said uh, in in the previous weeks they're throwing all sorts of money at this and it turns out that they are now if you're in the US you're probably getting the most bum deal of all which is that true AT&T we reported yesterday that you're getting a one month zoom pass but it apparently turns out to be three but if you're in say Austria and you want to be an A1 customer right this is happening in both Austria and Spain right they're throwing in a free Xbox 360 when you buy a Windows Phone 7 with a two-year contract. Also, they're being extra generous. And if customers take multi-line contracts, then they're throwing in two Xbox 360s. I mean, talk about... Come on, is there any other... Come on, seriously, right? If you had the choice between an iPhone and Windows Phone 7 at exactly the same price with exactly the same data plan and exactly the, con the same contract, I think, you know, and it's not going to be, Windows Phone 7 is probably going to come in cheaper, but I honestly think that, you know, an Xbox 360 is a pretty good sweetener deal. Well, you know, funnily enough, I, I caught this in a tweet earlier. Um, it was a post. I, I forgot to mark it down. But um, Telstra in Australia is going to be marketing unlocked phones. Yeah. When you hear the price, you're gonna want to just fall down and hit your head in the keyboard. The top of the line Windows Phone 7 unlocked from Telstra will be around the nine hundred dollar uh, Aussie. Somebody's making some serious markup there, and it's not Microsoft. No, no. Um, the cheapest one unlocked, I think, was about six hundred and forty something or other. Australian dollars. But then again, you know, a lot of high-end smartphones are clocking in around that price, but still, it's too high. You know what, though? Speaking of all these great stuff that's been given away at launch, we heard a rumor that Vodafone UK are sitting out the Windows 7. I don't get that one. No, I don't get it either, because, of course, Vodafone are part of a larger company, right? And they're everywhere. They're in Germany and everywhere. And all the other Vodafones seem to be on board and revved up. But this basically is all coming out of, from what I can tell, um, somebody made a phone call to a sales team in, Vod in Vodafone UK, and the sales team didn't know when it was being launched. But look, I've worked in sales companies before, right? Even in small ones where you might only have 30, 40 people. And people at one end of the room don't know what the other end of the room are working on. You know, it, it's, yeah. it's, I don't think it's enough to base an entire rumor on. It, it's the same thing. As I, I've approached Telstra. Granted, it's on Twitter, but I also DM'd them a couple times saying, look, when are you guys going to be coming out with the Windows Phone 7? We don't know. Yeah, we don't know, but we're part of the launch. We're doing it. And look, let's be honest here. Look at a Vodafone UK. They're shipping the HTTC... Um, Desire, definitely. Um, as far as yeah, they're shifting the HTC Desire, so they are, you know, they are shipping the phones. They they've been part of this, they've been part of the play along, and you know what? This is all happening tomorrow, so we'll be verified one way or the other come tomorrow. Now, <coughs> when um, this is an interesting one that came out again, it's one of those headlines that you know, you, you just want to kind of slap somebody for writing. But apparently, well, the headline is, Microsoft, no fan of 3D on PS3, has a different tune on 3DS. Yeah, let's clear this up, right? First off, it's not Microsoft. It's Microsoft's, Microsoft's VP of Games, Phil Spencer, said this, okay? Yes. And I strongly suspect he was talking off his own back. Now, this doesn't mean that Microsoft are not a fan of 3D. Basically, what they're not a fan, what they're not a fan of, is this silly situation you have right now. You buy a TV, then you gotta buy, buy a pair of goggles and put them on your head and sit there like a complete prat watching it. Okay? Nobody likes that, and the numbers show they don't. PS3 sales are down versus the Xbox 360. Xbox 360 is not shipping 3D. Why people don't really want it? But the real killer is when you look at the sales for 
3D TVs. Yes, they're selling, but people aren't buying the glasses that they need to watch the 3D. So basically, they're buying it with the functionality in the hopes that maybe in the future I might buy the glasses and use that. Well, so, you know. At 150 bucks a crack for a pair of glasses, that's just a little ridiculous. Well, what's worse is that you can only use these glasses with um, the specific model of TV that you've purchased. Yeah. So, you, you know, you can't bring them around your mate's house and all sit around and watch TV in his gaff. You just can't do it. So, you know, there's too many hurdles still in 3D. Yeah. It's still a gimmick. Um, you know, to me, it always will be. It's a pointless sidetrack of technology, period. Well, they'll get there eventually, I suppose, once they figure it out. But right now, the available options just aren't good enough for major mainstream adoption. Um, now, but you know what is getting major mainstream adoption, even though it was only announced <laughs> yesterday? Amazing. Which is uh, Office 365 which we talked about yesterday, which is Microsoft sort of bringing the cloud to Microsoft Office and giving uh, small businesses to, large, to all enterprise, yeah. the ability to basically rent, um, rent Microsoft Office uh, for the desktop and have all this cloud integration. Well, it, it, more importantly, it's, it's more it, with all the parts that they have, it's like they're renting, they're, they're renting Microsoft's infrastructure. Oh yeah, I mean they're getting SharePoint, they're getting Exchange, they're getting web, you know, they, their web presence, they're getting a, a whole lot of stuff here for very, very little money. Now, admittedly, it's more money than Google is charging, but they're, as far as I'm concerned, they're also providing a, a hell of a lot more service. And obviously, um, New York agrees because New York has switched over to 365. The other thing is too is what people are, are understanding is that what. Microsoft, the Office 360 is best of breed. And I don't care what anybody says, Google Apps are not best of breed. Well, I'll be honest with you. I We have Microsoft Office here, and I run Google Apps as well for a lot of my stuff. And there are importing problems. There are lack of features, etc. And, you know, Microsoft have, has its Office Online, too. But, you know, it's again, it, it, it's, it's the same as the whole open office argument that we had a couple of days ago. These things, unless they're 100% compatible, you go with the one that everybody's using. Yeah. And that's what's happened. And New York City has obviously made that agreement, has decided that they're bringing on 100,000 employees or switch, who are already using Microsoft Office to this. And they estimate that they're going to save 50 million a year because they're not getting a whole bunch of other licensing agreements as they were previously. And um, that's about I think it. that's about a wrap for us. What we're going to do, folks? We do have a little treat for you for the end of the show. We do, we do, and it comes out of um, the Windows Phone 7 launch event in Chicago. It's just a, a little something funny. And you can let us know what you think about it, folks, by dropping us a voicemail at 251-272-9633. Email us with your comments at podcast at winextra.com. Or don't forget, if you're watching this on YouTube, to drop us a comment below and hit the like button. And also, you know, subscribe. And if you're not watching us on YouTube, subscribe at youtube.com slash winextra. And thank you for watching, folks. We'll be with you tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Have a good day. Have a good one. Oh, yeah, that's right on her wall. When's your birthday? It's coming up. You've got a thief. Look how fast he is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a good picture.